Hey there guys, so I thought it would be useful to do um, like a separate series of energy work related videos where I will put them up probably on Wednesdays and as with this one on Thursdays, so in the middle of the week somewhere, that leaves me some room to, you know, talk about other subjects on other other days in the week and uh, in this way I can sort of remind myself that this is a separate you know thing that we want to talk about and that we want to uh, explore basically so um, this particular video today will be a more of a general introduction to sort of the approaches and thoughts that I have around this field and um, so there may be all sorts of goodies in here I hope that's the plan okay so if I look really greasy it is because I am I put another uh, healthy helping of hair oil in there because I do that uh, as it turns out I do that about every two weeks now so not uh, like every time because then I get way too greasy it also what with the olive oil that's in there I have to really wash it out properly and you know make sure that I actually get rid of the residue otherwise you get terrible itches so that's <laughs> a side note right there but that's why I look like this rather than more you know fluffy which is what you tend to see but it does help the hair oil you know the thing with hair oil and massages and treatments like that is you have to keep it up for a longer time for you to really notice any benefits so i think my hair is improving definitely and um, it looks uh, tends to be you know really nice and um, i leave the hair oil in for an hour or so and then uh, so that leaves me plenty of time to talk to you about these things now and then afterwards i will go in the bath and uh, see to the general cleanse you know so um as to energy work, I think that many of us, last time, so last week in my general introduction as to how I got around to learning energy work and approaches and things, how I got introduced into this, I said um, that there are people who are sort of born with energy or vibrational uh, sensitivity that gets talked about of course quite a lot and often you don't know if you're just a general you know person talking to somebody whether they are a an actual sensitive by nature who has had you know seen auras since they were six years old or before or who has seen angels or any of it you know since always whether there be a fraud <laughs> because there are those as well you know people who know how to speak the lingo and use that to make money i'm not sure how many of those who might how many of people you would really uh, decide to not trust in this particular uh, field i i have no idea i tend to be cautious you know with trusting what people say because uh very many people basically learn at some point or other um, a few things there are a few things that appeal to them there are things they work with and that comes later in life so after childhood right there is a separate category which can be i suppose either of the three or a mix of the three in in whatever way where i would certainly count myself in it is a category of people who are basically led to energy work or vibration awareness during their lives. It's for me, certainly, I uh, got involved in this. There were people and things that I was involved in and activities where also work wise, so a while ago, but it was expected of me to open myself up to this type of thing to i'm to have a tendency to smile at this point because it was 
very much uh, a, a double-edged business where later on it turned out that some of the people were using vibrational uh, tools that malfunctioned even and the thing kind of backfired for all of us that was insane so that's a separate tale right there but what I'm trying to get at is myself I I would not have out of my own nature necessarily um, gone to any lengths to learn had I not had a big pile of problems of my own psychological mental health type issues dissociation you know uh, even narcissism if you want to call it that trauma certainly and I was also then led into circumstances where um, vibrational work or healing work was a thing and we were supposed to engage we were supposed to be a part of it not all my uh, partners and colleagues and friends in that time frame in that context of, of where I where I'm talking about uh, I don't want to go into too much detail because you know why should I um, but some of the people either just you know didn't want to have any truck with any of the vibrational business um, or they basically tried their best and did up to a point did rather well and you were actually fairly free as long as you did your own thing with it you were free to experiment or experience whatever um, you know suited you personally so there was a lot of freedom I learned tons you know but it wasn't my personal choice so that's what I wanted to point out at first um, I want to also put in this warning here where you know we had at first really uh, what seemed like a really good relationship our group of people had a really good relationship with another group of who were um, who were basically healers and energy workers and um, then something went wrong where after a while I suppose the whole break up but it's what happens with people isn't it you would probably have a lot of euros if you got a euro for every time you hear of f people in some form of an organization for a first period of time you get along like a house on fire <laughs> ominous terminology yes and then after the after a, an x period of time you grow apart again and whether there's there can be a ton of awareness and mantra singing and prayer and healing I have had hundreds of healings healing vibrational healings given to me by different people that I think made not the slightest difference in the world to my inner makeup because now you know I can say I didn't let them get to me never so maybe I would have benefited a lot more if I hadn't been the, th the person I was right anyway what happened is we grew apart uh, over a period of a year or maybe a year and a half or so where I certainly because we were actually we were working for a company at the time and we didn't get to meet the people from the healers group uh, very often it was some that you saw those people like twice or three times a year or so unless you were actually involved in a particular sub activity like this healing business so um, at some point that's why what I'm want to get to here one of those uh, people created a symbol in metal that was supposed to be I suppose very supportive to all of us in our personal expansion spiritual expansion process the thing is the thing that I'm going to I mean you can talk about this or not you know describe it in more detail than I'm going to thing is 
um, it was a man-made uh, metal symbol, silver, gold, I don't know, alloys, whatever they used. Um, it was quite pretty, actually. Um, I got one myself, and my husband even got one, a friend of mine got one. I'm smiling again because thoughts, you know, thoughts race ahead of the actual speaking coming out here. Um, for a year or so, we tended to wear our symbol on a cord, like so, just like you'd wear a crystal or whatever. And everything was fine and dandy. And you could actually feel, I remember even the kind of a feeling or sensation that you got from this thing, where I would tend to compare it slightly to tachyon energy, if you know what that is. If you do not know what tachyon is, uh, you spell that T-A-C-H-Y-O-N. Go ahead, feel free, look it up. It's online. There's plenty of stuff like that. Um, we were introduced to tachyon and zero-point field energies and things like that also, with plenty of uh, details and side avenues of exploration. It was all great fun in those days. The thing is, the man-made symbol, it wasn't... Um, it wasn't a crystal, it wasn't something from nature, it was something that was made from scratch, from a particular base material, like a kind of a thick wiring of some sort. Um, I would, I have worn it for about a year, like I said, it may have been 14 months, I don't know, don't remember. I don't think so, I think, I think it was a year or slightly less even. When at some point, all of a sudden, I hadn't even noticed myself because I was way busy and it was a period where I wasn't really the most sensitive to these kinds of things anyway. I could sort of detect faintly things, but I was always distracted and I was always very busy anyway. So after that year, there was talk all of a sudden about you have to drop your symbol. You have to drop, you have to, uh, actually you have to give it back. It had cost us a hundred euros or almost. There was no discussion of giving the money back, of course, <laughs> after the thing malfunctions, you know. Um, my friend, that I do not see very often, but I used to see her back in those days, and I still see her um, on and off, you know, once a month or so. She lives quite close by, but she's also very busy. Um, she had one. She actually took it off herself and decided to not wanted. She was very, I was impressed, she was actually uh, quite sensitive enough to notice that something in the vibration of that gizmo had actually changed very much. And after I had, you know, received intelligence from my people that uh, that was the case, I started noticing it myself and I put it away and I gave it back and that was the end of the symbol. A very strange adventure, a very strange episode. And I was shocked and worried. I have a sip of tea here. Because hydration, you know. Um, I was shocked and worried. I was shocked because it, me it meant that the whole collaboration between the groups was actually really falling apart. There was a lot more going on that I've never known about, that I've never, uh, also because I didn't live in the same town as they, so I couldn't, you know, be there for all the meetings and all the things. So I have no idea what happened, really. Where the lesson or the moral of the whole story, then, in this particular case, would be man-made artifacts are tricky. And even when they are made with so supposed to be the best possible, the purest and the most, mm, whatever you want to call that, spiritual, high-minded intentions, apparently something went wrong there very badly. And I have, just like I have some type of a memory um, inside of the original positive impression that the symbol used to give me. I have a actually rather stronger memory of the negative of that. 
uh, at the end of the story, when I uh, gave it back. Uh, I've no idea what happened to the symbols, whether they were even destroyed or whatever happened to them. It's just that it was not that the uh, force, whatever it was that had been called into the symbol, had been neutralized. Or uh, the connection with the spiritual, whatever you want to call that, was broken and therefore all we have now is a silver shape with no character it was bad it was actually it had really turned bad like a tomato left to in a plastic bag gone all yuck and, and icky you know that sense of so there's an adventure that i've actually experienced myself i remember it very clearly and um i have no real explanation for the level of i suppose personal involvement that got pulled into this vibrational adventure to me vibration is about life about living things and um so i'm concluding the little story about the symbol here i'm just giving this to you as a thing to potentially think about or ask yourself you know what what is it you use crystals i think in most cases are fine because they are not made by men they cannot be influenced or changed necessarily all that much whenever humans are involved it tends to get really adventurous again, you know? Whereas if you have an amethyst, you can have lots of different types of amethysts and they can be really different in terms of vibration. But you can trust the amethyst, right? We know that. We know that we can trust the, the natural um, types and different... Uh, the, the different specimens that nature provides are they're all good they're all positive and um, just now coming back from the market I was looking at the chestnut trees that were opening up in the street over yonder and I realized that actually um, I have a great affection for trees myself so I have learned quite a bit in terms of sensitivity to vibration from plants and trees it's my it's one of my go-to things really and in to the extent even where if I um, if I'm feeling kind of disconnected and uh, you know lack of grounding and general all over the placeness I will think of oak trees because that's very natural to me and um, I can actually, and there's, you know, a, a follow-up. There's always a follow-up to energy and vibration processes. If you have a relationship with a particular field, in the course of the years, the vibration or the relationship, I should say, deepens and you try things out. So, for example, in terms of trees, um, you, the, the chestnut trees have a very special, you know, specific... Uh, vibration of their own a very very special nature D different from the oak trees different from pine uh, pine trees for example or a pine pine forest uh, like they're around here you know uh, and certainly resinous trees have a, a, a sort of a separate nature of their own to me that's all music to my ears that's I love that stuff um, it is possible in certain circumstances when you are either working for yourself in meditation or working for another person to use a, I suppose, an intention that uses a tree energy. I have, I have done this, I think, twice. One time uh, that I remember really clearly and I think that I have done it the same exercise another time afterwards for my husband when he was really 
um, he was exhausted and he had, it's a, a few years ago, like four years ago or so. So it's a while ago. And I was sort of invited in the thing that I was doing. I suppose I was helping him ground and getting him to, you know, relax and let go of tensions and things like that. Massage and bits and bobs. Um, at some point I managed, I don't know, it was the right time also. I uh, incorporated the energy of the yew tree for him in the in the healing session and that worked beautifully you could tell instantly like the I could ask sort of the presence of the yew tree what interests me then afterwards like now talking to you guys about this is that you can this is a actually something that can be done the it is a human possibility to conjure up if you like a vibration of something that you know really well to ask that thing to come into your neighborhood even when it's not physically present this is kind of interesting so uh, the yew tree I would say is an energy that has especially a very very deep uh, quality of silence to it and that was what my husband needed at that time so there is a great difference in terms of calling tree energies to help you in whatever you can also ask for yourself of course you can also ask in um you know remote for somebody who isn't there with you all those things are vibrational activities they're all energy work activities in each case let me stress that uh, certainly um we have to be certain of the harmony between the vibration that we think is a good idea for this particular situation and the recipient so the the you energy was good for my husband at that time so four things really the the you the situation that period of time and me so you have to make sure that's kind of I suppose if you do it in the right way there will always be a benefit if you do it in a way that is giving and generous and from your heart it will always work it will always work the oak tree or the 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 pine tree or the sycamore tree they're all different you know they're very willing to help you they're very supportive they're caring they're generous it's in their nature they're alive and they everything that you do to support life they agree with they want they want to you know, they're on your side so it's really easy I think that way so that's one thing I wanted to say and the other thing that I wanted to point out at this point is uh, or today in this session at the moment um, is that <laughs> you can something that I've mentioned a few times recently um, let me have a bit more tea first before I go into this because you know the tea has to go through here first to uh, do its work the thing with vibration one of the very fundamental things that I think are so essential to this whole approach and to how we look at these things right is whether how the thing basically is how deep you want to go into this there is a frontier around the the energy work most of the time for most people out there you know normal ordinary people who aren't really into healing or any of it um they can be surprisingly sensitive and alert and have everybody has tales about you know tarot cards that work magic for them or an astrologer that came out with wonders for them or things like that there's always lots of tales but going into the things for yourself is a lot more complicated you need to have some sign some kind of need you need to have a need 
You know, if you have no need, you're not going to do it. What I've been wondering um, is that there is so much discussion, there's still so much disbelief, uh, distrust even. There is a lot of disbelief, especially uh, from people who do not have these types of experiences themselves, who can't tell the difference between an oak tree and a fig tree, or between an amethyst and a smoke, smoky quartz, or what have you, who would have no truck with symbols of any kind, you know, would... Um, lots of people, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people maybe, have no interest, but they also question the reality of the experiences. Even when there's like 10 people in front of you saying yes, but I've certainly ever always, you know, it's not, it's not convincing them. So you cannot convince, I can convince you or anybody that this is an Agatha Christie novel, right? You can read that for yourself and see what it says and you can check easy enough because you have to use your eyes and you know English and then you can tell what the thing is. If you've never seen an, a book like that, I suppose if you lived in the desert under a rock and you've never seen a book, <laughs> it's possible, uh, then you will not be able to tell. In many cases, I think that vibrational knowledge is actually a... it comes to you through a separate set of senses. And we know nothing about those. I personally have the, have the idea that that is what our chakras are to a large extent for. Other than inside they help, you know, everything organize itself inside our bodies. That certainly, that's the function of the chakras. But in terms of like in here, uh, in the heart area and throat area and in the third eye area, those chakras have uh, outward capabilities as well observational cap capacities so you can look if you like he from here or from here and that is how we feel or pick up i don't think it's limited to this area i think it's in your hands and in in your in your skin in a million places you can uh there's a whole there's a whole set of senses that we could name, that maybe we will name eventually, uh, that are specialized in these vibrational types of information. There, so it you don't use your eyes or your ears necessarily, or even that part of your brain, the visual cortex or whatever it's called, you know. You do not use those for this. So that makes it very difficult to explain to somebody who doesn't have the experiences already. It's, it's actually really simple. You're using a tool that the other person has, of course, everybody has them, but it's that's why it's scary also. Because it's, uh, it's not that easily accessible, because it's a transformational thing for people to get to know their other senses, their whole the vibrational sense network, if you like to call it that, for example, it's just a name, just to give it a name. And to me, I find that kind of useful to uh, to think of things like this, because then um, I, you know, I can see that there are areas inside me that are responding to vibrational natures, you know, vibrational characters around me, vibrational personalities, if you like, but they're not my regular, p personal, historical, everyday type senses. It's, it's a very different side of me, so I wouldn't want to point that out, certainly. Let me see. Um, I think there's loads more, always. There's loads and loads more. I um, maybe can close off with that. I was walking to the market just now 
a couple hours ago. And I was sort of in my mind half preparing for this, you know, chat that I was going to do today. And I saw a pigeon, a wood pigeon, the ones, the bigger ones with the white spots up here, sitting on the roof of somebody's outhouse by, uh, you know, over yonder. And I, it was like, all of a sudden, for no reason at all, I was looking at the pigeon, he was sitting like this, and I could feel, I, I sort of saw, in whatever way that you would have called that, as if he had a bright spot sitting on his forehead like that, like a radiant, not on his forehead, but in front of it, like, like here. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. So. I've never seen this before, I've no idea what it was, whether it was a particular kind of awareness that the pigeon had at the time. For some reason I kind of doubt that, because the pigeons that I see around here aren't noticeably clever or bright-eyed or... But maybe you have different pigeons and you know about this type of stuff. Wouldn't that be cool? So, um, other than that, I think I will close up shop for now. Go have my uh, my my bath and my hair wash activities and things. I'm half an hour in anyway. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with us. And um, if you have any ideas, questions, uh, remarks, comments, commentary, and uh, criticism, please let me know. Okay, because I'm uh, I'm all about having more input if possible. Thank you. See you next time. Okay? Bye-bye for now.